This is Jamal Robinson, 720astrology.com. And today is a very important day. It is March 21st. This is the day of the vernal equinox here in the Northern Hemisphere. As in the first day of spring. And the unique thing about this vernal equinox is that we actually have the new moon today and the new moon actually occurred I think uh, on, I'm on central standard time so 12 22 p.m. so that was about almost an hour ago we had the exact moment of the new moon this is uh, a rather rare occurrence so there's a lot of energy of newness of rebirth and arguably this new moon more so uh, and the fact that it's on the vernal equinox this moon new moon this moment is as if we are living out the Christ story now I'm not speaking from a religious standpoint I'm speaking from a metaphysical standpoint and if you look at this story of Christ going and he dying on the cross the cross the crossing the vernal equinox is the sun crossing the horizon. The autumnal equinox is the sun crossing the horizon, as in the sun going down to its death. The vernal equinox is the sun being resurrected. This happens every year, but this one has a, a twinge of uniqueness and excitement about it because on the day of the vernal equinox we also again have a new moon so a new moon is when the sun and the moon occupy the same degree okay so they are both at zero degrees of aries so it re invigorates it reignites it reinforces this whole energy of newness resurgence coming forth the whole thing about the Christ story it's about three days now the math doesn't really add up when you think about it but the, 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 the number associated, the symbolic number associated with it, it's, it's three. Okay? Even the character of Christ represents the third component of the Trinity, the, the actual Trinity, which is the masculine, the feminine, and then the affinity that comes out of it, which would be the Christ. So there's this prevalence of the number three. He died spent three days in the underworld or the tomb and then he reemerged or he was resurrected well if you go back and look at some key transits we've been dealing with a three-year cycle of death burial and resurrection so i want to go and touch on these key dates to kind of support my my premise here uh, but first let's just talk about what Aries represents symbolically Aries is the emergence of singular consciousness it is the emergence of identity who I am me as unique to other 
Aries is also the seed. It's the baby. It's the primal state, the initiating force. Aries is ruled by Mars. Now the planet Mars also deals with knives. And you think about a knife, a knife has a sharp edge and a point. And if you think about the sign before Aries, which is Pisces, Pisces would be anything but sharp. It's, it's blurred lines. It represents fusion. It represents uh, mutable water, uncontrollable, going everywhere. But then out of that, which seems to be chaotic, there is some semblance of order that comes out of it. And that order is coagulated energy that forms into a sharp point, which is Aries, the emergence of singular consciousness. That singular consciousness we can liken to a knife. So there's a sharpness to Aries. I think it's important to keep that in mind as we are digesting this energy of the vernal equinox coinciding with the new moon on the same day. If we look back over the past three years, if you've survived it, which obviously you have, if you're viewing this video, then there has been an opportunity to sharpen your knife, to refine, to polish, to get it ready because a knife is sharpened by tension. And there has been a whole hell of a lot of tension over the past three years. So let's walk back. First though, let me show you how to walk back in time. It's this. Now this is just one version of the ephemeris. This is the American ephemeris. This one is 1950 to 2050. You want to have you at least one ephemeris, but it's, it's good to have several. Okay. The ephemeris allows you to walk back and forward in time. This is a biblio time machine, as in a time machine in a book. Okay. Because and it's probably the best, well, I'm going to say, let's remove the adjective best. And let's say it is a necessary tool for studying, learning, practicing all of the above astrology. It's an absolute necessity to have an ephemeris. So what I did was I walked through my ephemeris back in time to the winter solstice, December 21st, 2020. Now there was a lot of hoopla around that date and uh, it should have been because it was a big occurrence. It was the rare Saturn, Jupiter, Saturn conjunction in Aquarius. Now that aspect that they formed involved an 800 year cycle, 200 year cycle about a, I think that was a, uh, maybe a 400. There were several cycles. There was a 20 year cycle involved because they conjunct uh, every 20 years. 
they had not been conjunct in air signs for over 200, I think, and they had not been conjunct uh, in Aquarius for maybe 800 or so years since uh, like 1400s. So this was this was and it still is a big deal. It was Jupiter and Saturn at zero degrees of Aquarius. Now, mind you, this is on the winter solstice. Now, part of what the winter solstice represents in ancient cultures is the sun standing still for three days. There's that three again. And then so uh, likened to being in a grave and then it reemerging or being reborn or resurrected on the third day and starting to climb out of its tomb, meaning ancient cultures were celebrating the fact that the days were starting to get longer. OK, and this is in the northern hemisphere. The days are getting longer. The sun is recovering its strength. All right. Jupiter and Saturn again are at zero degrees of Aquarius. So at that moment on the solstice, we have a future timeline that is laid, but there is tension because Jupiter is ready to go guns blazing into the future. Big ideas, big thoughts, big vision, let's go. But there's Saturn who's in his rulership in Aquarius, who is conservative, tedious. The taskmaster says, but no, this, this, and that has to be done before we can go into the future. At the same time, Saturn is now starting to move within about a five degree orb of its square with Uranus in Taurus. Saturn's at zero. At this time, I think Uranus was around six degrees of Taurus, which means they were close enough for the energy to start being felt. And this drama between Saturn and Uranus would play out for the next almost two years. Tension. being held back but then there's this energy about wanting to leap forward into the future the knife is being sharpened because today the vernal equinox new moon zero degrees of aries forms an exact sextile to the Saturn Jupiter conjunction at zero degrees of Aquarius on the winter solstice, December 21st of 2020. And let's talk about what a sextile represents. The sextile is of the nature of Venus. Venus is about relationship. And we all know love is important in a relationship but love won't do by itself relationships take work work so the sextile while there is an affinity between the two uh, signs involved and the planets that are occupying those degrees at that moment for the absolute best to come out of that work is required work but that work yields great benefits because there's a there's an obvious opportunity here 
So there may have been big ideas around the end of 2020, but the next two and a half years or so, or three years would require some work to bring it to fruition. All right, let's move forward to May 11th through the 15th of 2022, because during that time span, Jupiter moved through the zero degree of Aries. So that means Jupiter was forming a sextile to where it was conjunct Saturn at zero degrees of Aquarius on December 21st, 2020. So again, there's that, that, that forward momentum or that urge or that vision of what can be. There's this energy of rebirth. There's this energy of moving forward and a stronger sense of who I am. That energy is prevalent at this time where Jupiter hits zero degrees of Aries. But at the same time, we still have Saturn squaring Uranus. It's not time yet. It's not time. By the autumnal or fall equinox of the same year, 2022, a cup, just a few days past the, the, the actual autumnal equinox, September 25th through 26th, the sun is moving from two to three degrees of Libra, which means it is opposing Jupiter, which is now at three degrees of Aries. Increased tension and angst, and now relationship is on the hot seat. Now, thankfully, these are not two malefics who are opposing each other, but there's still some type of a little tension there. Something needs to be worked out. And this is magnified by the fact that we have Saturn retrograde at 19 degrees of Aquarius, and we have Uranus retrograde at 18 degrees of Taurus. So money, money, freedom, uh, feeling uh, or desire for freedom, feeling constrained, wanting to go forward with something while at the same time feeling resources tightening could have been putting tension on relationships, which could have also made the vision feel hindered or put on hold. October 18th through the 27th of the same year. Jupiter is retrograde, has retrograded back to zero degrees of Aries again. At the same time, we still have Saturn retrograde 18 degrees of Aquarius and Uranus is still at 18 degrees of Taurus. So the tension has tightened even more. The, the, at the same time, the feeling of I got to do something. I got to make something happen. I got to, I got to do something. I can't keep going on with things the way they are. There's that feeling. By December of 2022, again, on the solstice, from December 21st through the 29th, starting at the solstice, Jupiter has turned direct and it has crossed zero degrees of Aries again, 
which means it again is forming a sextile to that point where Jupiter was conjunct Saturn at zero degrees of Aquarius back in 2020. So that means 2020, the vision is initiated for some of us. Then 2022, there's this, hey, let's go forward, but there's breaks. But you're still trying to push forward. Then there's the opportunity to come back and revisit how we approached that opportunity because Jupiter turns retrograde and goes back over that zero degree point again, which was around the autumnal equinox of 2022. And then it, no, I'm sorry, October of 2022, October 18th through the 27th. Then it's direct and it gets to zero degrees again in December. At this point, we should start seeing some clarity in our vision about how to approach this new project that we've been working on possibly since the end of 2020, the beginning of 2021. which brings us to today. The vernal equinox, March 21st, 2023. New moon, zero degrees of Aries. We've covered a three year timeline, technically uh, two and a half, I guess, but 2020 to 2023, we're going to call that three year timeline. Starting on the solstice, another key happening on the autumnal equinox, 2022. Another key happening on the solstice of 2022. And now, and now, and now, If we've done our work and the work has been to toil, the work has been to endure, the work has been to learn where we have been tasked to learn, to grow, to expand, to toughen up, to pour the foundation to frame the house properly. If we've done that, sharpen that knife, including in, in, in all that process, then now is the time of emergence. Now, there is never a moment where there's not some type of challenge. And we still have challenges, of course. But if we just take just this segment of our attention and look at how the progression has moved since the solstice, winter solstice of 2020, we can see a story that has been developing we can see how we have been participating in the reenactment of mythos. And probably the oldest story there is, is that of something in an initial state, devolves, decays, and then transforms and begins to evolve and become. There's an opportunity here on this vernal equinox, this new moon, zero degrees of Aries, March 21st, 2023, 
to re-emerge, to be reborn, to be resurrected for your renaissance, to realize the manifestation. The, the seeds of manifestation were planted at the end of 2020. And you've been grinding, you've been toiling. The blade has been getting sharpened. Now it's time to pull it out and use it. It's a time for courage. It's a time for forward momentum thinking movement. It is a time for bold action. Twenty twenty three in the Chinese culture is the, the year of the rabbit. And the rabbit can be completely still and then suddenly leap forward. Hopefully you've been preparing for the leap because we all want to leap forward with progress, but you want to be prepared as best you can. And we can see how Saturn especially has been working to prepare us for the leap because Saturn ultimately is not a psychotic uh, entity <laughs> hell bent on just seeing one suffer. It is driven by the work, the necessary work on the positive side, the necessary work being done to accomplish the vision that has been seen. Okay, so you got this big idea. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to lay the foundation to build this house? Saturn says that if the foundation has not been poured correctly, the house has not been framed properly. It will not stand. So Saturn has been a key agent in preparing us for this opportunity for reemergence. I'm expecting big things. I know there are other challenges that still loom. There are other aspects that are that are still huge we still got pluto that will shift uh, or make its ingress into aquarius uh, and again at zero degrees so there's there's this huge emphasis here on the future we're on a future timeline we're on a future time line and there's no time to be scared because the future is here. Jamal Robinson, 720astrology.com. Peace.